Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt, and today we're continuing on our spirit series. Uh, today we're going to focus on Plymouth Gin. Uh, Plymouth Gin is unique because it is a protected geographical indication. Um, it is gin made in Plymouth, England, the simplest way to look at it. A um, good comparison is tequila from Mexico, champagne from Champagne, France, or whatever. It's just a legal definition to a product that comes from a certain uh, geographic region. Uh, today there's only one distillery making Plymouth gin in Plymouth, so we're not just talking about style, we're also talking about a specific product in a roundabout way, but uh, Plymouth gin is still probably the, the second most prominent style of gin out there, so I felt it important enough to discuss. Um, it is produced by the Black Friar Distillery. Uh, it's located in, in, in a site that was an old uh, Dominican Order monastery. The monastery itself was built all the way back in 1431. Now at the time there wasn't a distillery there, it was just the, the monastery. Uh, the distillery came around uh, thanks to Coates and Company in uh, 1793. They, they had taken over the land and the building or what have you. Um, and in 1793, this was a post-gin craze. If you remember, if you'd seen my gin kind of overview video, we discussed the gin craze that hit England in the mid-1700s. Uh, that was caused by the fact that the government, the king, did not regulate gin production and everybody in London pretty much was making their own gin. Well, uh, that uh, ended up giving gin a bad name. It was thought of is more of a commoner's drink or a peasant's drink. So when uh, the distillery was created in 1793, they wanted to create a product that was a little higher in uh, for the, the upper class. And uh, they wanted to make sure they stuck out from those cheap London dry gins. And so uh, thus created uh, Plymouth Gin. Um, Plymouth Gin is less dry than a London gin. Uh, has kind of earthy tones to it, uh, a softened uh, juniper flavor that is not as predominant as uh, you would get in the London Dry Gin. Um, the reason that is is because they they use uh, more root ingredients. Well, we discussed in the gin video that juniper will always be the predominant flavoring agent and then after that you can have all kinds of different botanicals, herbs, spices, what have you. Well Plymouth Gin they use some root ingredients. The two most predominant are uh, angelica root and orish root and it's from those that they get a little more earthiness to it kind of give it give its, its unique uh, flavor. Um, Plymouth Gin also is unique because it has a long history with the British Navy. We talked about also in that gin video about how gin was used by British sailors to mix with their tonic water that helped them give a dose, get their dose of quinine, which helped prevent malaria. Well, Plymouth Gin was pretty much the official gin of the British Navy. Um, so much so that when a new ship was commissioned to sail by the British Navy, the Plymouth Gin would give them a Plymouth Gin commissioning kit. It was a wooden box with a bottle, a couple of glasses. There would be kind of a ceremony for the ship's uh, initial voyage, what have you. Um, also Plymouth uh, came about and created a Navy Strength Gin. And it's uh, still available today. 57% alcohol by volume, 114 proof, so it's quite hearty. Uh, to say the least, but that kind of makes sense. Uh, if you were a British sailor in the late 1700s, 1800s, you probably had to be a pretty hearty fellow too, so you probably want a little, little uh, extra octane in there. Um, Plymouth Gin is unique enough that in cocktail books, you'll see that they will specifically mention Plymouth style gin, that, that don't just automatically presume if it's a gin-based cocktail, it'll always be London Dry Gin. Most of the time it will be, but you'll see some instances where they've specifically mentioned London, or uh, Plymouth Gin because it is just unique enough that uh, they feel the cocktail would be altered in some way if you use the London Dry Gin. Uh, I know specifically in the uh, Savoy cocktail book, 
that there are several cocktails in there that mention Plymouth Gin specifically. So something just to keep in mind out there. Uh, the, of course, the particular spirit we're going to try today is Plymouth Gin from the Blackfriar Distillery. 41.2% uh, alcohol by volume or 82 proof. Um, on the bottle, there's a little bit of history on the bottle. That is the picture of the Mayflower. And why that is on there is the May Mayflower set off on its voyage from Plymouth, England. So there's a little bit of history in this uh, bottle here. Uh, Plymouth Gin, as far as the history of the company, um, again, it was created uh, in that monastery. Eventually, uh, being bought uh, by Absolute and part of their umbrella companies that eventually got rolled into today. They, uh, Plymouth Gin is part of the Pernod Ricard family of spirits, a massive, massive portfolio of spirits. Um, like a lot of the spirit companies today, they're under some kind of umbrella and that's their umbrella. So let's give some Plymouth Gin a try. Right. A little funkier nose than that uh, I think the tank array we tried last time. Let's give her a taste. Yeah, that is different. Um, not quite as hot. Remember, tank array was 90 something proof. This is 82 proof, so a little. Milder, um, yeah, juniper's not as prominent, there's there's some kind of, I don't know why I'm thinking of the term funkiness, but a little, little funkiness, some punch sweetness on the front of my tongue, I do pick up almost some citrus, I, I think that's what, it, I think that's what I'm getting. Um, yeah, it's, it's different. It, it, it is, um, like I said, the juniper softer. There's kind of a funkiness. Um, if you did not mix this with, you know, over the, like, I can definitely tell a martini with this compared to a gin martini or even a gin and tonic, I could probably get some differences. It, if you kept the ingredients pretty basic, I could see why they would, Say Plymouth, Plymouth Gin over London Dry. Um, not being less dry though, I was expecting uh, more viscosity, but I didn't get that on there. But uh, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Again, I'm not a big gin guy, but uh, yeah, it will do. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.